Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel, Armor Sound 427. Actually, today what we're doing is a Backlash 2023 review. And this actually took place Saturday, May 6th, which is today, tonight. And it actually took place from San Juan, Puerto Rico, in front of 17,944 people. This is in San Juan, Puerto Rico. This is the first show since 2005, New Year's Revolution 2005. And we're just going to jump right into the review. And actually, I do want to... Uh, say that the set was absolutely great. I love that the arena was actually different than what it actually usually be because I didn't want to have the exact same set so they don't change up sets. But I'm glad the set was actually different. It was kind of like a stadium type set, even though I mean, I don't know if this is considered a stadium over there. I don't think it is. I think it's just considered like an arena. It was arena size, but it looked like a stadium with actually the set and everything like that. So that was great. The crowd was fantastic. Like we all, like we all knew. Whenever they go and see go overseas, it's gonna be great. Just like Money in the Bank, I think it's gonna be great. Clash of the Castle was great, so the crowd was actually great. I was talking about the crowd like throughout the whole entire review because of the different matches. But kicking off the night, they did Bianca Belair versus Eo Sky for the Raw Women's Championship. Now going into this, a lot of people thought that Eo Sky would actually win, and they were gonna split her up from uh, Damage Control. Go to go to Raw and actually hold the Raw Women's Championship. I didn't believe it because I don't think they see Eo Sky as a top person. And to me, I would assume that Daddy likes Asuka more than Eo Sky. So why not just put the title on Asuka at WrestleMania? And why would you give it to Eo Sky after? So that just didn't make sense to me personally. But this is a great, great opener match. This was probably the best match on the show right here. This is definitely the best match. This is probably a match that I would definitely go back and actually watch again. But yeah, and Eo Sky was super over. Now, I don't really know why she's super over because, like, she doesn't really get presented around TV. I don't know if she has history in uh, Puerto Rico, but she was super over. I don't know. The fans just loved her. Uh, Bianca Belair was definitely a heel inside this match. It definitely felt like a WrestleMania 22 type vibe with Triple H and John Cena. Then boom, boom Bianca, which definitely never happens to her ever. She never, I don't think she ever has gotten booed, like, ever. A lot of people thought she going to get booed. A lot of people thought she going to get booed after she beat Asuka because a lot of people thought she was going to lose. But, I mean, Eo Sky, she definitely over. But the problem with her being over here is that will she be over everywhere else? Because I don't really see her getting these reactions. Like, just from what I've seen, get, getting these reactions anywhere else. So maybe she will going forward. Or maybe she does. But she always come up with damage control. So you really can't tell what reaction she will actually get on her own if she actually did something on her own. But I just don't think she'll get this reaction everywhere else. But Diddy should definitely pay attention to this, to how over she was on this show and on this card. But it was a great, great match. Um, of course, Damage Control... Well, I actually thought Damage Control wasn't going to come out. But they actually came out towards the end of the match. And they tried to distract her. They got, you know, all the stupid stuff. Distracting referees, trying to hit her, uh, trying to hit Bianca and all that type of stuff. But actually, EO actually... Got uh so what, what oh yeah so Damage Control tried to try to distract the referee but then Bianca Belair actually reversed it KOD for the win but this was a great great opener I definitely really really enjoyed this match and you know Bianca Belair actually picked up the victory inside this match and I'm definitely interested to see where they go with their future now as soon as they start talking about I believe it was on Friday Night SmackDown that she's gonna become the longest reigning woman if she actually win this match. That's not automatically knew that she was going to win this match. I mean, it was just obvious at that point that she was going to win. But I definitely really love this match. This is a great, great match. You definitely, if you have not seen the show, go watch this match. This is the best match on the show. And just because it peaked at the beginning, it doesn't mean it went downhill. It just, this, this definitely peaked at the first match. And actually, getting into the second match, which my least, least anticipated match on the show, Seth Rollins versus Omos. Now, I'm still... I said this on the WrestleMania review, and I think I said it somewhere else. Why do they keep putting Omos in big matches and have him lose every single match? I'm not going to go too in deep with that, because, I mean, this is a point of wasting my time. Omos is a waste of time. I really don't understand. It's like... I don't know if Triple H and Vince is booking. It's like Vince is putting him in big matches, and Triple H is having him lose. I just... This booking literally doesn't make any sense. But... Seth Rollins actually, and this was actually a pretty decent match, you know. I, I mean, I guess I just didn't care because I, I knew I knew Seth Rollins was going to win. Some people said Omos was going to win. I never believed that Seth Rollins is winning this regardless. He's about to be the new world champion. There's no way they having him lose. And a lot of people thought Omos was going to face Roman. That cannot if they have him do that, that doesn't make any sense. Like he just lost to Seth, and they're going to have him face Roman. So I don't know who they're going to have to face Roman at Night of Champions, but it's not going to be Omos. 
but Seth actually won with a top rope stomp. That was really, really cool. I mean, there's some cool spots inside this match, you know, with Omas, you know, reversing the stomps and him kicking out uh, the frog splash at one. That was cool, but I'm, I'm just so tired of Omas being inside the main event. Not main event matches, but big matches on cards and going against top guys. Like, he has to beat the top guys in order to go against them, but... You know, Seth Rollins actually picked up the victory, so Seth Rollins going on the bigger and better things. This is absolutely pointless, to be honest. I don't understand the point of it, but, you know, it is what it is. They want to do this match, so I, I really don't understand the point of this match. Now, actually going out of this, and, you know, even though I had Seth Rollins winning regardless, it actually would have made more sense if Omos would have won. This match would have made more sense. Third match from the show, Austin Derry versus Bobby Lashley versus Bronson Reed. I'm a fan of all three of these guys. I think Bronson Reed could have a bright, bright future in WWE. And this is a really, really good match right here. Definitely sh shine all three of these guys. And to protect the Lashley, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I think Lashley and Gary is not over yet, especially with the ending. And they on the same brand. It's not over yet. I know I'm sick and tired of it because they feuded all last year. They feuded at the end of the year, and then they feuded again. And it doesn't seem like it's over yet. But that just is what it is. But they had the same, you know, they did this ending a bunch of times where the guy does his finisher, the other guy throws God at the ring, then he just pins him. So Lashley actually spared Bronson Reed. Austin Derry picks up Bron picks up Lashley and actually throws him out the ring and gets the pin. They've done this a bunch of times in triple threat matches. I mean, it's just a simple way to for the hill to win a triple threat match. But yeah, that, that was actually ending. I thought it was a really, really good match. Austin Derry is never going to lose. I don't think he's losing that anytime soon. I wouldn't doubt that. I mean, at least hold it till SummerSlam, to be honest. But I wouldn't drop that from anytime soon. And that's just me personally. I would not I would not have Austin Derry lose. I think he's going to continuously feud with Lashley. Hopefully get some fresh opponents from him. But I I mean, I would hope that he'd get fresh opponents. But I, uh, me personally, I think he's going to be feuding with Lashley. But Austin Derry actually picked up the victory. Definitely want him to get some fresh opponents, new faces. There's a bunch of new guys on SmackDown. But I just believe he's going to continuously feud with Bobby Lashley. Because it's ending, especially with Bobby Lashley getting back inside the ring. I think they're going to continue this feud going inside the future. Fifth was the fourth match on the show Ray Ripley versus Alina Vega this was a decent match I thought there would be a little bit more to this match I mean Zelina Vega was never going to win but I, I just assumed there will be yeah I thought there would be a little bit to this match but it really wasn't anything to this match I mean Ray Ripley basically dominated the whole match I thought they, they put Zelina Vega more of a fight up and just I do more to it with her but maybe I just had two expectations for it. But Ray Ripley won with the rip tie for the win. That's really all there is to say about that match. I mean, Zelina Vega got a great reaction, great standing ovation at the end. But it was an okay match for me. Really wasn't anything special on this uh thing. This is probably like at the bottom tier for the matches. This and the Omos match was like the lowest for just for me personally. But let's hop into probably... And, oh, yeah, yeah. So... With actually uh, Ray Ripley coming inside the future, I'm guessing they're going to swap the belts at this point because neither of them lost and they're both for opposite brands. So I'm guessing they're going to swap the belts or just talk about them changing their names. Which if they change the names, you don't have to swap the belts at all if they actually change the names. But we actually see about that coming up inside the future. But let's get into probably this could arguably be the best match on the card. Or the, to me, it's the second best, best match. I mean, it's a toss-up between the opening match and this. Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest. I mean, this match was fantastic. I will say, you know, it, it was overbooked. I guess you could say that. But I thought it was absolutely fantastic to me personally. Even though it was overbooked. Bad Bunny was fantastic. Damian Priest was fantastic. Did a lot of great spots. And when they actually went to the uh, monitor trucks or what are you talking about, the elect electrical uh, part of the arena, I assumed Damian Priest would take that bump and take that spot. But Bad Bunny actually did. I was actually really shocked by that. And another great spot, Carlito returning. I was a huge Carlito fan growing up. So Carlito returning was fantastic just for me personally. You had Savio Vega out there. Which once I seen him backstage, I kind of assumed. And LWO and Judgment Day, I knew they were coming out. I absolutely knew they were coming out. Both of the both of those teams. They actually brought all throughout the arena and throughout the ring. But there was a lot of great spots inside this match. I thought Bad Bunny did great. I mean, he always does great inside these matches. And whatever match he actually does, Damian Priest is great. And Bad Bunny picking up the victory definitely was something that I expected. 
But I definitely think that they put on an absolute show outside this match. And I definitely can think that you could argue that this is the best match on the show right here. That's just what I think you, you could definitely argue on the show. That this was the actually best match. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely really, really enjoyed it. I believe it was like the longest match on the show actually as well. And getting into Bloodline versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Matt Riddle. This was a good match as well. Um... I kind of thought that Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt Riddle will win. And this, I mean, I have no problem with Social Core. They want to push him and everything like that. But I feel like they keep giving us the same ending in every single match. With him just small smacking Matt. He, he comes out of nowhere, small and smacks back Matt Riddle for the win. Like it's just, It seems like it's the same thing over and over again. Maybe it's just me and what I'm thinking. But I just feel like it's the same thing over and over again. But tensions between the Belial... Uh, I definitely want to see what they actually coming up inside the future with that, with these tensions, what the storyline will actually be. I don't think they're going to do a full-on split for a while. I think they're going to start the tensions right now and then do a split later. I do not think they're going to split anytime soon. That's just me personally, to be honest. I don't think they're going to split anytime soon, but that could be, you know, up to the debate what they actually do with that. But yeah, the bloodline actually win. I should have picked the bloodline. This, only, this is actually the only match that I got wrong in, in my predictions right here. But yeah, Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. What do they do coming up in the future? I mean, I assume Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn is going to drop the titles. Matt Riddle, he needs to go to the Intercontinental Championship or the World Title. Just they need to just end this whole bloodline. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Matt Riddle. So so called Matt Riddle. I'm so done with that. So so called guys win. That's it. Even though Matt Riddle got no wins over So so called, which in a few, I assume you would get a win, but he has no wins. But let's get into the main of it now. Would I say that this is disappointing? No, because I had low, I had really low expectations for this match. Did it come out to be a good match? I would say yes, that it came out to be a good match. I will say that. But the ending just kind of confused me because it's just like, you're going to do another match? And if you're you and if you going to do another match, why not have Brock Lesnar win? Now, you might, might just want to have the fans going happy, but... If Cody Rhodes winning the way he did, did the fans really go home happy? Now, before the match, Cody Rhodes actually attacked Brock Lesnar and started beating him up, which didn't make sense to me because that's kind of like a heel tactic, but they want to protect Brock. Brock Lesnar gets busted open because he actually hit the turn, but that was a cool spot, seeing blood. Cody Rhodes hits two back-to-back -back, uh, car crossroads on him. Then he gets the Kimura lock. So he hits the Kimura lock. I seen this coming from all the way a minute before it happened. I was like, he's going for the Kimura lock. Cody Rhodes flips over, rolls him up, and he wins. So that's the way you're going to have it. And, and, like, so they're definitely, they got to be setting him for another match. I'm just like, when is this happening? I don't see it I mean, I guess Night of Champions, but isn't that a whole thing full of championships? Well, I guess they can have a non-title match during that. But it's just like, if you're going to do another match, why not have Brock win? And then the next match, I don't know if you're going to have, so I'm, a, okay, so they, so they could do this. Have Cody win, then have Brock win, then have Cody win in their match. Or we have Cody win, Cody win, and two matches. Cody win, Cody win, Cody win again. But it's like, when is it? I'm assuming it's happening at Night of Champions because Brock is probably going to be in Saudi. I don't think they're not going to have him there. They could brag this out to all the way to SummerSlam. If they're not doing that Cody and Roman match at SummerSlam, What's the biggest match you can do for Cody at SummerSlam? Brock Lesnar. But just this ending, I just was not a fan of this. And it should have been an ODQ match. With all the stuff they did inside this match, why wasn't this no DQ? I know you don't you want to do don't want to do the same thing as a San Juan Street fight, but this should have been an ODQ. That's just me personally. I did not like this ending. I thought it came out to be a good match, but this, and another thing, this was just a setup match for another match. That was my other problem with it. Which you know there are matches like that, but just to have a setup match just for another match, I'm just not a huge fan of that. But yeah, that's just me personally. I, it was a decent match. It was a good match. But this card, it wasn't that one bad mo ma one bad match on this card. I would say it's a really, really. I would say that this is probably a great show. I would say this is. I would get this a great show status. I would say this was a great show. There wasn't that one bad match on the show. There was multiple great matches. I mean, matches that had to go to Bianca Belair and Io Sky and Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Those are like the top matches. Just for me personally, those are the top matches on this actual show right here but yeah tell me your thoughts in the comment section below what do you think about this main event i, w I wouldn't say i'm disappointed in it i just expected something different i definitely would say that yeah the open match and the bad bunny match are two best matches on the show but tell me your thoughts in the comment section below like comment subscribe Thanks.